I'm Joe Talentino with I Know Jack's The Show, where I tell you about cool local stuff. Great local restaurants to eat at, local small businesses, local craft beer, upcoming events, and more. If you like that kind of stuff, make sure to like the I Know Jack's Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I Know Jack's, eat local, drink local, and be local. It's a new week and time for a new episode of your favorite local TV show, I Know Jax. Well, maybe it's not your favorite show yet because maybe this is your first time here. <laughs> Every now and then I meet viewers who tell me they are flipping through channels and all of a sudden there I am and now they watch every week. So well, welcome all you first timers. We're going to start by going out to Jack's Beach to visit a Thai family restaurant that's been at the beach for a while. This time we're going to find out about the Thai national dish, Pad Thai. Today I'm at Buddhist Thai Bistro in Jack's Beach and when I come here, I like to keep it simple. Pad Thai is the national dish, so that's a great way to go. And I also like to have chew my Thai as an appetizer. Now the one thing about Thai food that people always say is, well, I don't like Thai because I don't like super spicy. Well, here's what's cool. Thai food isn't spicy unless you choose to make it so. I usually get it like this, and then I put the spices that I want on it. That's the secret. Pad Thai is the most popular dish of Thai food. Everybody know Thai food, they know Pad Thai. They try Pad Thai. And Pad Thai is just, it's so simple. Um, it's a noodle dish, stir fry with eggs, uh, with bean sprout and uh, scallions and a little crunch peanuts on the side, but the secret is in the sauce. Guy adds paprika and tamarind. I think that's what gives it its unique flavor. That's the secret. That gives you the, the umami flavor, the sour, the sweet, and we, add, you know, if you like spicy, you add spicy to Pad Thai, and it just, it just, you have to try it. It's hard to describe. It's, you know, everybody get hooked with Pad Thai around the world. The wrap is based on back in the day, that's how they serve to the king. They call it golden wrapper and they wrap the golden omelet. I love doing my job every day. I love sharing this culture and this food. I love seeing people eating and happy. Remember to try Pad Thai and Shu Mai Thai at Buddha's Thai Bistro in Jack's Beach. See you there. Buddha Thai Bistro on 3rd Street in Jack's Beach has been supporting I Know Jack's for years now. I know Guy and his family very well. It's a really nice family, so if you haven't been out there yet, you need to stop by and say hello. And by the way, they have a lot of great happy hour small dishes too. That's often what I do. And you know what? You may find me hanging out the bar, having a beer and having something to eat too. But when you go and visit one of the restaurants that you've heard about here on I Know Jack's, please tell them that you found out through I Know Jack's. It really helps me when you do. Next, we're going to take a peek at my top five events. I've put together a list of my top five events. Let's see if you agree with me. This time I have a variety of happenings for you from cultural to pure fine. Number five is Finding Neverland. Finding Neverland is the Broadway musical that tells the story of how Peter became Peter Pan. The big kid of me always enjoyed this magical story and this musical is actually based on the film with the same name, so this sounds like a really cool musical to go and check out. Finding Neverland is at Thrasher Horn in Orange Park on March 26th. At number four is Dogfest Jacksonville. At number four, I wanted to add this fundraiser for an organization that does a lot of good. It's called Canine Companions for Independence. This nonprofit provides highly trained assistance dogs for children, adults, and veterans with disabilities. On March 31st, there's a fundraiser at Seawalk Pavilion in Jack's Beach, so go out and support a great cause. At number three is Big the Musical. I'm not a big fan of adulting, which is why Big the Musical appeals to the kid in me. 
The musical is based on the Tom Hanks film with the same name. Now, it was a great movie, and I'm thinking the musical is going to be a lot of fun, too. Big the Musical is at Alhambra Dinner Theater, March 27th through May 5th. At number two is the Cummer Garden Tours. It's spring. I love gardening, so the Open Days Garden Tours is something that belongs on my list. Cummer has partnered with the Garden Conservancy for this event. This is a self-guided tour that begins at the Cummer Gardens and provides entry into four private riverfront gardens in the historic San Marco neighborhood. The Garden Tours take place March 30th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and you can get your tickets on the Cummer website. At number one is the first luau of 2019 at the Lemon Bar. I'm suffering from spring fever, so that's probably why I had to put the luau at the Lemon Bar at the top of my list. Enjoy the nice salty sea breeze and enjoy a cocktail to celebrate the arrival of spring. That's on Thursday, March 28th, starting at 6 p.m., but go early because the place fills up quick. That's just what I found interesting for this week. If you watch me online, let me know in the comments below what you're looking forward to doing. You can also find more fun things to do on my website at iknowjax.com. Doing a weekly TV show is actually quite a bit of work. It really is, but it's fun work, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> but sometimes I wish I would have more time to explore, go on little road trips, that kind of stuff. Now, one of my favorite places to visit is St. Augustine, and we're gonna go there next to visit one of the local businesses, Creme de la Coco. Down in beautiful St. Augustine on San Marco at Creme de la Coco, checking out, they do sweets, and I'm not normally a sweets guy, but I'm gonna go back in the kitchen and check out what they got going. It's kind of cool to put chocolates in edible packages. Okay. So what like we're going to be doing is we're going to be making an edible chocolate sphere to put the chocolates inside of. And what's this called so people can know what to order when they um, come? I mean, we call it kind of the Wonder Ball. Um, obviously, there's things like that already. But I, I was going to call it a maze ball. A maze ball. <laughs> but, you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> that's, not, that's not okay, maybe. A little bit science. Absolutely. A lot of tasty. It's part of the reason I like it is the art and science mix and it seems to make people happy. We've done some dinners where people use these to put over desserts and things like oh, that. Oh, got you, okay. But I like it when everything's sort of like a one-off. Got you. Like, it's just, to me, it's Each got a... Each a snowflake, I got it. E exactly, exactly. That way, it's just got a little bit of its own personality. It looks pretty good, so we're about 72, 75. A swirl and so you can start to see sort of the patterns that you're going to come up with we'll be putting you can pick what type of chocolates you want in there right you can sort of put anything you want mini macarons mini cookies pretty much anything i think my name amaze balls is is something that should stick hey <laughs> amaze balls is not that bad it is not that bad Trace. so basically the ultimate purpose of what we're doing is is you're kind of letting it set so right. when you temper chocolate it's liquid, and then you're tempering it back. So the chocolate's crystal in structure, so you need it to crystallize properly. The crystal you're looking for is beta six. There's okay. six crystals in there. So beta six is what we're shooting for. And so you can see here how it's starting to look a little more matte than shiny. Right. So it sets pretty quickly. Once it okay. starts setting, it, it goes. So in the winter, it's a lot better because it's colder. So did you pay attention in science class? It sounds like you did. Because uh, I might have sat in the back of the class, I, I'm just I, saying. I did, I did all right. You know, <laughs> the product of scientists. Both my parents are scientists. Oh, so, are they? Okay, yeah, well, good of, for you. Sort of ingrained a little bit yeah. in there. I didn't right. have that. That's okay. That I turned science into food. That's where I went. I'm going to it in behind it because with, so with the white behind it it will make those spots pop, pop through. once it's sure. once it's set so tell me how did you get started in all this cooking stuff you say your parents were scientists and you yep did you just started messing around in the kitchen or uh well when i was 13 i made a deal with them got to a point where i was just like hey look you guys get me what i want and i'll make dinner whenever right uh, so i got a grill and just started making dinner all the time. There you Pastry go. was never the intention, you right. know, but it just kind of kind of kind of went that way and yeah. here we are. So this is a 58% dark chocolate. 
Um, I have it tempered already. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to cast these shells. So when we say tempered, that means melted, right? To, to a degree. So basically to temper chocolate, you need to take it up to a certain temperature, which melts all of the crystals of okay. those six crystals I talked about. Um, so you need to take it up to about 108 or above, and okay. that melts all of the crystals. And then to re-temper it down is you're gonna bring dark chocolate to about 90, 88 to 91 degrees. Okay. So, so what it's we're about gonna, the feel for it. It is, it is, it's a feel thing. Um, and what I found with chocolate is either you can do it or you can't. Right. It's, it's a very touch-based thing. Do you ever look at something when you're done and go, I made that? Every once in a while. Just every once in every, a while? Well, it, it just depends. Honestly, that mostly happens with the way things taste. Sometimes I'm like, eh, we'll see how this goes. What was the last thing that you went? Oh. Uh, it was probably the apple caramel that I oh, made. Oh, that was great. Probably. Don't you love those moments though when you're like, yeah, they're great. Yeah. They're great. And then everybody's I like, I made that. Like, yeah. Those are amaze balls. <laughs> they're amaze balls. They're <laughs> amaze balls. <laughs> When you know chocolate's done well is it's shiny. Okay. So that has to do with the tempering, but the faster and the harder you can get it to snap off the plastic, the shinier it's gonna be. Flip it over, tap it out. Oh, they came out. But you can see that little bit of yellow in there now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple different types of chocolates and some of these crisp pearls that everybody loves so much. So it's like a ch chocolate surprise pinata and everything's edible. And Everything tasty. is edible. Man. Everything is edible. So normally we'll- I love you, man. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> Hazelnut, milk chocolate, mint chocolate, and rum. This is, this is pretty cool. Can you hear that? I can hear it. <laughs> it's awesome. I'm gonna show you how I make my champagne and strawberry I'm, hot I'm down today. for that. All right. This is um, freeze-dried strawberries ground okay. up, so you really get the strawberry, Real strawberry, strawberry flavor in there. It's not just a flavored and those are sugar. Little sugar hearts. Is yeah, that what you have to <laughs> have stars? pink glittery hearts when you're making strawberry and champagne cotton candy, right? Absolutely. I typically do about um, three or four spins that go into, into this one little cup, tiny like little container. I promise I didn't eat all of that myself. I did have help. But when I go to Creme de la Coco, there's always so much I want to taste and I don't make the trip that often. So when I do go, I end up overdoing it a bit. I enjoy having a good time, meeting cool people, eating good stuff. Something else I enjoy is of course, craft beer. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Every week on I Know Jack's, I like to spotlight a few craft beer happenings that look fun and interesting to me. I know you're of course dying to know what I'm drinking today, and it's a hibiscus lime hard kombucha from Kyla Kombucha in Oregon. I'm gonna start by talking about something that a lot of people who are not craft beer enthusiasts don't know. I don't know any of those people, do you? <laughs> Everyone I know is a craft beer drinker. If not, I'm working hard on converting them. But people who don't drink craft beer usually don't know that desserts and craft beer make a phenomenal pairing. And if you don't believe me, I think you need to put this event on your calendar. This event is hosted by our friends at Jacksonville Restaurant Reviews. It's a night of beer and desserts from local sweet shops. 
learn about brews and hear the stories behind the sweets. Plus, you get to eat and drink. <laughs> Desserts are from Cupcake 50, Dozerts, Lucy Sweet Shop, and Nitrogen Creamery. This event takes place on March 27th at Bottlenose Brewing and you can get tickets on Eventbrite. Another big event is the inaugural Ardwolf's Early Bird Fest. More than 30 of the best breweries from across the country are coming for the very first Early Bird Beer Fest. Participating breweries include Seventh Sun, Angry Chair, Copper Tail, MIA, Proof, and Funky Buddha, just to name a few. It takes place in the parking lot and will begin at 12 p.m. for VIP ticket holders and 1 p.m. for general admission. That's Saturday, March 30th, and you can get your tickets at 904ticks.com. I also wanted to let you know that you can get a free burger on March 30th while supplies last. You see, Engine 15 downtown is hosting an event with the funny name Bernie's Bubba's and Beer, and that starts at 2 p.m. Free Bubba burgers while supplies last and free beer to the first 100 people, so if you snooze, you lose. Bernie's Grills are also going to be there doing demos. The event starts at 2 p.m., and that's at Engine 15 downtown on March 30th. Let me know what beer I should be drinking next time. As you may or may not know, I'm not a big fan of really bitter hoppy beers. I love sours, I like stout ciders, meads, and I'm open to trying anything. So send me your suggestion. If you really want to show your appreciation, go to my website and click on the button that says, buy me a beer. <laughs> and if you have beer happenings I should talk about, send me that too. Cheers. That's it for this week's episode of I Know Jacks. I'll be back again next week with a brand new show, but guess what? Before then, I'll see you on the internet.